Hello and welcome back to the Long Island Railroad Montauk Branch. In this episode, Extra 1501 completes its epic journey across the layout by switching Bushwick. According to the switch list, we have three cars to drop off at the New Haven Interchange and one car to pick up at King's Concrete. Interestingly, one of the cars that goes to the New Haven has to be picked up from the team track. It should not have been possible for my spreadsheet to generate this order. I checked the code and I have no idea how this happened, but since it's an interesting operation, I'm going to just go with it. This map shows Bushwick in relation to Maspeth and the uh, Lur mainline. The team tracks are actually kind of between Maspeth and Bushwick on their own lead, and the New Haven interchange is several miles further down the line at Fresh Pond, but I included them both here because they're extremely useful things to have on a model railroad. This shows a close-up of the Bushwick area I model. Back in the day, this place was a warren of tracks and industries that I would have liked to model, but I didn't have the space. Furthermore, the relevant buildings have all been torn down, except for Cluett Peabody. Consequently, Bushwick is the least prototypical of all the areas of the layout. Our first task is to dig out the New Haven boxcar from the team track. As luck would have it, it is the furthest one in. The plan is to pull all three cars, stow the New Haven car in the siding, and respot the other two. Then we will run around the New Haven car, shove it onto the interchange track, and then go back for the rest of the train. The other two cars for the interchange are fortuitously on the rear of the train. We'll then pull forward and shove all three cars onto the interchange track. Right here you can see me manually switching the, the switch with a blue point switch machine connected to a dowel. I try to use blue point switch machines on as many of my turnouts as possible. They work really well and I like them a lot. In the background you can see the Cluett Peabody building. Cluett Peabody makes arrow shirts for men, which you may have heard of. I scratch built the building from foam core board. As I mentioned earlier, this building is still standing and looks much the same as it did in the 60s. It has spots for four boxcars. The team track that the engine is now entering features a ramp for unloading boxcars and a crane for unloading large bulky items from gondolas and flat cars. The crane is a Walther's Scene Master drag line that I just finished. I modified it in what is no doubt a highly unrealistic way to serve as a regular crane rather than a drag line. This is a super kit loaded with detail and all the rigging actually works so the lines can be repositioned however you want. By the way, I try to review everything I build over at Hobbylink.com. Their prices may not be the best, but they have the best website and rewards program.
In case you've forgotten what we're doing, we're currently backing the New Haven boxcar onto the interchange track. Then we're going to go back and get the train with the other two cars of the interchange track and back them onto the New Haven boxcar and then push them all down the interchange track. The interchange track enters this building, which is modeled after a prototype on the Lure. Curiously, the top of the model is patterned after one end of the building, and the bottom of the model is patterned after the other end of the building. This is because when I originally designed the building, only the top half was visible. Later on, I redesigned it, and the bottom of the other side of the building was the best fit. The interchange track then proceeds down this ramp under the M&L Wholesale Building. While I am in general a terrible carpenter, I was able to build this ramp so that cars could be loaded onto or unloaded from the interchange track without lifting the building out of the way. The train backs down, the cars are manually decoupled, and then the train moves out of the way. Then I can lower the ramp so I can get the cars off. If I want to originate cars from the interchange, I just reverse the process. So far, this worked well. The building in the background is Henning Brothers. They make bottles for the many small breweries in the area. The building itself is a highly kit-bashed Walther's Champion Packing Plant. It has two spots for hoppers inside the building and one for boxcars outside.
Now the only thing left to do is to pick up the empty cement hopper at King's Concrete. We'll leave the train on the siding and then go pull out the hopper. Then we'll add the hopper to the back of the train, run around the train, and back it all the way to the yard, which is prototypical. King's Concrete is, in reality, a fairly modern facility further up the Bushwick lead. I chose it because I really wanted to model a cement handling facility. The building is a modified Walther's Medusa Cement Company kit. I added the structure above the unloading shed, the walkways, and the stairways on the exterior. Also shown are their bulk transfer, conveyor, and belt conveyor kits. I scratch built the hopper and tower for the conveyor belt. The track has room for three closed hoppers of cement and two open hoppers of gravel or aggregate.
And so the switching of Bushwick and the layout as a whole is complete. Many industries were not serviced, but we will get to those in future episodes. For now, the train will back down to the yard. I won't bore you with the details. Next will be the final episode in the saga, the exciting loading of the car float. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.